On occasion when you travel to a flea market, sometimes you find a hell of a deal on things that you weren't really thinking about when you went there, but you were just looking to see what they had. That was definitely the case with this. These are Fisher STV 88 these are Fisher ST884 15 inch speakers. That's right, 15 inch woofer. Got a mid range and we have a tweeter. Massive, massive speakers. But that wasn't all. Everything you see on top of these speakers was part of the bundle. This is an entire uh, Fisher Studio Standard setup right here. That is a Sherwood receiver that was part of the bundle, although it doesn't go, obviously, with the Fisher equipment. I was tickled pink when I saw that the price was a whopping $29. I promptly went up to the cash register and I said, can someone please help me get all this stuff to my truck? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy said, well, where is it? And I said, well, it's back in the corner there. So we walked back there, and he was stunned that this guy was only asking $29 for all this. Those speakers alone are worth $29. That Sherwood receiver right there is worth $29. The rest of it is worth $29. You want to talk about a hell of a find? This was definitely one of it. Now let's look at the amplifier here real quick. <clears throat> this is a component system, which means everything is a separate piece to this unit. As far as I could tell, the only uh, part of this equipment that had a date code on it was the CD player on the top, which my camera doesn't want to focus on. Uh, it had a date code of uh, May of 1986. But this amplifier is very interesting. This amplifier is rated for uh, 470 watts of total power consumption. And we have uh, A and B speaker outputs right here. Uh, these are the power outputs for the tuner and the tape player. And then we can add two more right here if we want to. These are not counted with this. These are a separate thing from the rest of this. These, however, are, because these are being fed directly from the transformer inside of the unit here. We also have phono, tuner, CD, video, auxiliary, video record out. It's interesting this is an AV receiver. I guess you were probably to put a uh, VCR right here, what I'm assuming. The way to get a good idea about the per channel output of this receiver or any receiver is to look at the total wattage out uh, consumption of the receiver or amplifier in this case and multiply that by 60 percent and that'll usually give you a very good close estimation of what kind of um, power output per channel you're looking at here. Now I'm guessing being that this is an A and a B system, I'm guessing that the B is probably uh, divided, the A and B power output is probably divided between the transistors so it effectively cuts your power output in half to each speaker. But 470 watts, um, that's about 135 uh, watts per channel at 60 percent. Um, yeah, that's a lot of power. So I'm going to take a look at the transistors here and pop this thing around. And Fisher was kind enough to give us a uh, access panel right here. Right here and right here. And the transistors are right under here. So I'm going to pop this cover off and we're going to take a look at the transistors. Uh, and we're going to look up the spec sheet on those because I'm curious to see what their output actually is. We have a D1717 and a B1162. Not sure which one of these is the power supply tr uh, transistor and which one's the audio amp transistor, but I'm going to go look that up here in just a minute. Let's take a quick look at the components of the stereo system here. Uh, we have a compact disc player, 
Nothing terribly fancy, but uh, yeah, it'll get the job done. Uh, graphic equalizer here. That's going to be really fun to play with. And not sure if this is for left channel and right channel, or not exactly sure. I guess this is for left and right. I guess there is an R here and an L here. Okay. And we got this tape player here, dual tape deck. Uh, it does do metal tapes. And uh, it is a bit dirty down in there. You could definitely use a good vacuuming and a good cleaning, but the head looks like it's in great shape. It doesn't look like it's worn off at all. Um, and yeah, there are fingers there to detect the tape type, so that's cool. Uh, it says metal there. I hope maybe that lights up. That'd be kind of cool. Tape 2 looks like it uh, snacked on the tape at some point there. Got a little hungry and decided to chew it up. So I don't know if that was just a bad tape or uh, if that's going to need some cleaning there. But, uh, well, it's obviously going to need cleaning either way. But uh, hopefully that's not an indication of a more serious problem than just a good cleaning. Uh, and then we got our uh, tuner right here. Just a simple digital synthesizer tuner. Nothing terribly fancy. And, you know, it's all in good shape. I mean, the buttons aren't worn off. The chrome's all still there. And... Yeah, it's in good shape, just needs a good cleaning. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, amplifier back together here and uh, hook all this up and we're going to give this thing a good old sound test and we're going to see if it got any lights burned out or what's going on with it. If it works all the way through, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'll have to find a tape that I don't care about to try in that, uh, <laughs> that player. Maybe I'll give that player a cleaning first. We'll see here. So. And these Fisher speakers are actually in really good shape. The uh, foam surround is not cracked, not split, not torn, not chewed on, anything like that. And these mid-range and tweeters are also the same way. You now the cabinets are a bit beat up. And that one is missing this little trim piece right here. Um, and I do have the covers for these also. They're a little bit tore up, but... Uh, that speaker is also in excellent shape as well. These uh, center cones are obviously been pushed in. Someone got button happy and thought, ooh, I put that at the button. Or just some stupid ass punk kid. Oh, I just put those in because I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, that's uh, actually not something that's a big deal. That really won't affect the sound quality. Um, but that can be fixed fairly, fairly easily if you're very, very careful. Although, um, once they look like that, uh, and you pull them out, they usually, especially these, uh, aluminum foil things here, um, they usually probably will still have some creases in them. They probably won't look as good as they did when they were, you know, not molested. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fixable. So, but I'm going to show that in another video. And seriously, if I really cared a whole lot about the uh, condition of the cabinet, um, I could just build some new cabinets, frankly, because in all honesty, the speakers are really what's going to make the, the difference here. They're also ported right here, which is pretty cool. Uh, it looks like this front panel here is a separate piece that's probably glued on on the inside. So, you know, all, all this stuff here can be rebuilt. You know, you can go down to your local Menards or, or um, <clears throat> um, you know, you can go down to your local Menards or uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or, you know, take your pick of favorite uh, home improvement store and just buy some uh, wood grain shelving material and, and rebuild a, a new cabinet for this. You know, it's not that difficult to, to cut one and glue one together and, you know, you can most likely, there's so many sizes of that stuff, you're most likely going to find one that's pretty dang close to this size already. So, you know, but really they're not, they're not horrible, you know, I mean, there's, they could be a lot worse, let me tell you what. You know, and this one, Really, the base, the bottom of them is really the worst, honestly. It looks like they got wet down here at one point a little bit. The uh, wood is kind of bubbled up there a little bit. And 
you know, this this type of thing, this can be taken off. I mean, you know, that's not a big deal. Or if you really want to have a piece of trim right there to stub your toe on, you know, I mean, you can just, you know, put another one on there. <laughs> not that big of a deal. But, uh, yeah, so, like I said, I think the speakers themselves are definitely worth 29 bucks. Not to mention the rest of these goodies, that's for sure. I'm going to hook this Sherwood uh, up too, but I'm going to do that in a separate video because I think this is going to be a pretty interesting receiver to, to uh, talk about in a separate video. So, Sorry guys, you have to wait for that one. The original guesstimate of 135 watts is pretty close. Um, the actual dissipation of that trans transistor, which is the uh, SD1770, um, is actually 120... where did it go? 120 watts total. So, if you factor in distortion and stuff like that, this uh, amplifier is probably rated at about 100 watts per channel, I'm guessing. So, there you go. I gave it a good cleaning there. I also cleaned the heads and the rollers and the cap stand on the tape drive, but unfortunately the tape's not working. Uh, after I pushed the play button just to test it, uh, it's now spinning the motor constantly instead of stopping even if I hit the eject button. The other play, just these buttons barely push, so there's a lot of dirt in here or something that's gumming everything up, so can't just de uh, demo that right now. The CD player actually does work though. As a matter of fact, there was a disc in it. Kind of funny. Came up as soon as I turned it on, even though it was filthy as hell, came up and said 12 tracks. I was like, oh cool. But, as you can hear, I have no audio coming out of this thing. And I do have the speakers hooked up. And you can see there, and I got them running down to the speakers. So either the speakers are blown or something's wrong with the amplifier here. I've pushed the muting and loudness and the speaker buttons here, and I get absolutely nothing out of it. So I'm not sure I don't get anything out of the tape and the tuner and the compact disc and anything doesn't seem to make much of a difference so I don't have any hums or anything coming out of the speaker so I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and pop this cover off and take a look inside of there there's a couple fuses back here on the uh, amp uh, power supply itself and then there's four or five down in here uh, that uh, I'm wondering if any of those could be blown so We'll see, but we got power and we have lights and it's pretty, but so far that's all we've got, so I don't know, this may end up turning into a kitchen table electronics repair project. This tape deck's definitely got issues, so I'm going to have to tear that apart and take a look at it. Although, in all honesty, these were also some thrift store finds while I was down there that I got. And I got these also down at the thrift store. Quite a hell of a bargain, too. Uh, but I'll talk about these in a later video, but I uh, see why I don't have any uh, audio out of this amp, so we'll be back in just a second here. So here's the inside of this uh, amplifier here. Um, <clears throat> I can already see that fuse looks like it's pretty well blown. Uh, apparently some evil genius at uh, Fisher decided that it was a incredibly good idea to put a case screw behind this uh, heat shield for the heat sink right here. Holy crap. Well, anyway. Um, give you a good look at the inside of this thing. It is using Nichicon capacitors. Although they are only 85C capacitors. I uh, normally want to use 105C nowadays when you're doing a recap job. Uh, looks like we got some more fuses there. Wow, this thing is fused to hell. But I gotta say, there's really nothing to this uh, amplifier. Um, interesting, when I looked up the uh, wattage rating, I said that this thing was 120 watt IC for the uh, transistor IC wattage there. And uh, sure enough, the meter, wattage meter, actually goes up to 120 watts. So, um, I guess I'm going to have to see what the official wattage output rating was for this thing because uh, I find it interesting that um, they would use 
uh, a transistor that's rated for a maximum of 120 watts instead of using say 150 watt uh, for the power output just to be on the safe side so that there's a little bit of a buffer under that transistor but uh, never mind it looks to me like, like I said that fuse is blown so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, that one might be too um, oh, and dust these off I think real quick here I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a good vacuuming too I think because there's definitely a lot of dust I think this whole thing sat in a garage at some point for an umpteen number of years so but I think that we can get some life back into this thing and give it a test here so we'll be back in just a second uh, given a good cleaning there you can see that fuse definitely had a bad day um, looks to me like uh, this fuse may have some issues as well so I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of these hopefully I have the right ones um, the rest of the fuses look okay to me and the relays are clicking on so I know this thing should be functional so well, we're going to find out if that's all she needs is a fuse change. Hopefully it was just something that maybe they plugged the speakers in backwards or they came connected or something like that at some point. Or maybe they drove the amp too high and blew the fuse. I don't know. Hopefully this is all that she'll need, but we'll see. There's a look at the fuses that I just pulled out of that Fisher uh, amplifier. Very scary looking. I got to say, that's... Uh, they definitely had a very, very bad day right there. Well, all I've got is some 4 amp 250 volt fuses and these are 6 amp 125 volt. So, I've got them in here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And we're going to see if we have a big old light show that comes up right here. Uh, I would not run it long term without putting the correct fuse into this thing, but this should be good enough just as a test. So, well, fire it up here. I'm going to plug it in here. And let's go ahead and see what happens. And I'm going to stand back. Well, and they just blew. Which means that we have a bad transistor over here in the amplifier circuit somewhere. Oh, well, that sucks. Or we've got another short somewhere, but either way, we have nothing. So I found which one appeared to be the faulty transistor here, and it was this guy right here. <clears throat> I robbed this one out of another receiver that was blown, and I checked it, and it was okay. It has a little bit higher uh, wattage rating than the original one did. This one, I'm not sure about. I think this one's okay. I don't. It's not uh, shorted out. Um, but I noticed that it does seem to have pretty low resistance across these two pins when I have it soldered back in. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, more so than this one does over here, but. Uh, for right now, I just uh, soldered them back into, or soldered this one anyway, back into place. Um, if this works, I'm going to go ahead and probably uh, touch all these back up with some fresh solder because some of them are kind of, uh, they're not really as far down as I would like and they're not centered very well either. They're not broke or anything, but um, better safe than sorry. Looks to me like this board had been planned for uh, two more transistors to go here. Um, Possibly for a center channel, perhaps. <clears throat> I'm not sure. But uh, whatever this was for, it obviously wasn't used there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on here. We'll give it another smoke test here. And hopefully we won't let too much magic smoke uh, disappear. Because a lot of times you can't get the genie back into the bottle once he's disappeared. So I find it interesting that they uh, bothered to put an access panel right here to get to these. Kind of makes you wonder if they had something in the design that, that caused these to fail, or maybe it was just they knew that there were a lot of idiots out there that would uh, connect their speakers up, or even just accidentally perhaps the wires touch back here and fry one of these, so they thought ahead of time and decided, well, you know what, maybe we'll make it easy for people to be able to replace those once it's out of warranty. Or maybe it made it easier for their technicians to replace it when it was in warranty. I don't know, but you've also got a removable cover here, 
which is interesting. So if you ever wanted to recap this particular uh, amplifier, most of it would be pretty pretty easy to get to right into this panel. Uh, it's also interesting how they just took this panel and stamped it out of the bottom cover there, as you can see, and then they just flipped it around and and uh, stuck it in there and called it a cover. <laughs> I guess whatever works, right? Now let's go ahead and find out if we can make anything smoke or pop or whatever here. So I figured before I go ahead and waste another one dollar fuse in this thing, I'd go ahead and check some other transistors here to see if there's any shorts. Sure enough, that transistor right there is shorted out, and so is that one back there. Unfortunately, while this one I can probably get to by just unscrewing this, or unclipping it, I guess, um, and folding it back, um, looks like I'm going to probably have to go ahead and pull this entire assembly out of here in order to get to this one. These other transistors over here seem to be okay. They're not shorted out or anything, so I'm going to have to look through my uh, junk piles of junked out receivers and see if I find the same or close to the same with maybe slightly higher ratings than what's in here now, which I should be fine with that. This one right here looks like it actually has a chunk blown out of it. This one doesn't really look so but it's still shorted out anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and look through my pile of stuff here and replace that and hopefully that's the last of it I don't have any direct short showing up on the fuses anymore so hopefully that will save the transistor that I just replaced the main transistor down there for the amplifier from blowing out again we'll see